Okay. We're getting a lot of questions about like stream related stuff and I love talking about this. I just always constantly paranoia, worry about boring people. Would y'all like to go to just chatting for a little while and I can really like tear apart the stats and explain to you guys about like what worked for me? What the response would be. Just chatting. Holy crap, we're in just chatting. Oh my god, Mux not in the Guild Wars 2 section. Holy crap. So, people are asking what worked for me. When I started streaming, we, 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 can, we can actually look at this, because I don't even have to rely on my memory, because we've got a tool for this. So let's go to, this is uh, sullygnome.com. Sullygnome.com. My word trip's not correct for just chat. shut up. Sullygnome lets you look at your stats. Mm, so let's go to the, the last 365 days. Guys, can, can uh, was that my birthday? Oh no, this is when we celebrated being live for two years. This is when we celebrated being live for two years, and that one was my birthday. So where's followers? Mux followers. Okay, 365 days ago, on September 24th, I had 3,000 followers. And now we're at 20,000. Some people grow faster, some grow slower. For me, this is great. You can see, like, there was, free, it's like, from September to January, I got 1,000. But then you could say it really gets a much steeper incline here. And what that was... All right, this is my YouTube channel. Let me go to date, or not date, not date, not date. I want views. So well, actually, we'll go back to date for a sec. Look at my oldest, my oldest stuff. Look at this, 11 views, 12 views, eight views. Like, no one was watching this stuff. I tried making some highlight reels early on. So many streamers try this. I tried making highlight reels, just taking the, the best epic moments, slapping them together in a thing. And I... 200 views. Okay, you know, that's a lot better than my other stuff was doing. Um, I would put it on to every subreddit that allowed me to do that. I, I obeyed their rules, but like the Divinity, uh, this was Divinity Original Sin, I did it on their subreddit. I did it on, uh, I should have tweeted it, I didn't use Twitter at the time. I, I did it on like uh, gaming highlights, gaming moments, funny moments, epic moments, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, the thing, the problem with those is all of those subreddits are filled with people blasting out their own stuff. No one's going there to look at stuff, you know? It's, like, no one goes there to look at things. Like, that was all the wrong stuff to do. Now, I did get some a lot of views from the Divinity, and you can see, you know, like, here's highlights, highlights. All the ones that are above, like, double digits are highlights. So this is just, this is old stuff. Now, let's go to views. This video right here, I know many of you have seen this. After I got... Arena Net partner. I got a referral link. Anytime I get someone to download the game, I get some support. I'm not allowed to say exactly what. Signed on non-disclosure agreement, but I get some support from them. And I was like, why not try my hand at bringing more people into the game? And to toot my own horn here, I'm pretty good at explaining something I firmly believe in. I made this video. It's a video just trying to show all the great things about this game. It's a recruiter's video for Guild Wars 2, and it has my referral link in it. And it's just trying to get people to try the free version of the game. It's not trying to sell them anything. 500 subs or less on YouTube at the time that I made this video. This video pushed me over a thousand subs, which that, when you go over a thousand subs, your YouTube channel can be monetized. That's when you can start making your first penny from YouTube. Uh, you make nothing before that. So it was after that that I started getting very, very, very minor, but income from YouTube. It was after this video and it's still doing work. It's still doing work. So later on, you know, fast forward to, what is this, a month and a half later, I was like, well, new players are gonna need a guide. And I made this video and it did really good too. It did really good too. It's catching up. The Stronger Start video, the one where I literally insult every single class in the game. Like, it's not something, like, it's it's funny because I made a guide that ArenaNet themselves, even though I'm a partner, they won't promote that guide because it has so many memes in it. I, I call uh, I call Hollowsmiths Green Lanterns. When I talk about Daredevils, I show the Marvel Daredevil running around and beating people up with a stick. Like, it has so much stuff that they can't touch. Now, you'll notice there's a huge gap between this and this. Like, a lot of my guides have done really good, but nothing like those first two videos. So, first guide I did was the Six Stun Trap Beast. It was a my, my very first build where I did something no one else was doing in it, and it took off a little bit. It, it, it got me to uh, almost Platinum Division. 
And so I was like, well, you know, I could, I could be the guy that did this. You know, there's two types of people. There's ones that if they discover something really strong, they don't tell anyone, they keep it to themselves, they hoard it as long as possible so no one else can take advantage of it. I wasn't that guy. I wanted the fame. I was like, I don't care if everybody copies my build, I want the fame. So I made the Six Ton Trap Beast Guide. It did all right, it got a few thousand views. Uh, there's a subreddit that you can post uh, unique uh, Guild Wars 2 builds in, and it did pretty good there. So all of them all of them watched it. And then I was just like, oh my God, you know, guide video. That, that's when I discovered the term evergreen content. So evergreen content is essentially content that is going to stay relevant. Can any of y'all, hold on, I'm, I'm gonna quiz you guys. I'm gonna quiz you guys. Can any of y'all tell me what some of the most popular evergreen content is? Like, come on. I know we got some smart people in the chat. Evergreen content. Like, people are just gonna keep coming back to it. Music is one of them. Monica, thank you. Not safe for work. Not safe for work videos and music are huge because people keep coming back for more of that. Now, a lot of those other answers were true as well, but nothing like those first two things I just mentioned. Because how many, like, yeah, how many times, like, you go back and you look up some old music video that you just had the desire to listen to again, and it's got, like, seven million freaking views. Like, those, they, they're evergreen. That's evergreen content. People just keep going back to that over time. So I started trying to make evergreen content. So at that point, my workload was divided into two things. Things. High effort videos that are evergreen and low effort videos when I just needed to get another video out. A high effort video was a guide. How to make your first legendary weapon. Nothing in this guide has gone out of date and it's been almost a year since I've made it. It is still completely relevant. People might look at the upload date and get a little leery, but it is 100% relevant still. So it's doing great. And you know, it's my third most popular video now. Making gold with low effort, still relevant. Inventory management, still relevant. Fractal guide, still relevant. All, all of it is still, still relevant. Plus when I'm on Twitch, anytime anyone asks me about any of these topics, I just link them to the video. I just, I, I'm literally sending people from Twitch to YouTube and on YouTube, people are coming over to Twitch. And the main way I do that, I actually did this on accident. Cool thing about these, at the end of every video, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the edit screen for a second here. On the end screen of a video, you know how when you get to the end of a video and it shows like, a, you know, a sub button and there will be like some boxes with like, uh, you know, play another video type of thing. So at the end of a video, as you guys know, it suggests more videos. For years, all my videos have ended with, yes, the best video for viewer and most recent upload. Well, you know what my most recent upload is every single night? It's Muck is live right now. So every time I put this video here and I, I upload it at the start, of the, I make a new one every day say what I'm doing, my agenda, upload it, make it live, and then I delete it at the end of the stream. So there is, I think there's like seven or 800 videos that end with Muck is live right now while I'm live. The day, now granted, I had to have an established YouTube for this trick to work, but the day I started doing this, I literally went from like 100 viewers per night to 200 viewers per night, almost overnight. And of course it's only been growing ever since, more and more of you guys have found me. Like, it wasn't planned out that well. I didn't plan it out like that, but, and I, I never monetize these videos. There's never commercials on the going live video. It's just meant to be like, hey, I'm here. This is what I'm doing tonight. Click the button below. You know, if you're a boomer and you don't understand, there's a link right below this video. Click that, we're one click away. It's super easy. It's one click. I tried to really emphasize, because the hardest part about getting someone to visit your website or whatever you're doing is getting them onto a website they don't normally frequent. So you really have to stress how easy it is to hop over there. I'm not sure YouTube allows that, by the way. If you make a video for the sole and express purpose of getting people off of the YouTube platform, it is against their terms. However, that's why I also include things in there like the day's agenda. I always try to add more into it so that it's technically allowed. And I've done this hundreds of times and never gotten a strike. Now, that's not to say if YouTube were to get a stick up their backside and decided to give me a parking ticket for this, you know, they could walk up, kick my headlight in, and then give me a ticket for the headlight. They could do that if they chose to do so, but they never have. So far, if it ain't broke, not fixing it, my account has zero strikes. I've got zero things against it. I've got room to keep trying this for now. Uh, honestly, I couldn't read the YouTube link because I have YouTube to where and I click and I click it's just lazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's definitely working. It's definitely working. I've only had positive from this so far. And if they were to tell me, hey, you're getting a strike, you need to stop this, I would stop immediately. But that's never happened and everything I've read about the rules makes it seem like this is okay. You're just the first one who's doing it. No, no, I'm not at all. I'm not at all. 
There, there's there's content creators that have been doing it for like six, seven years. Uh, and I got the idea from watching them. Uh, no, absolutely not the first to be doing it. So that that was the thing. So that the YouTube blew up with the guides and then people started coming over from the YouTube to, to Twitch. And then uh, that really, really carried the Twitch, you know, many, and as many people in chat has already said, many people from the, that are in Twitch chat right now came from the YouTube channel. And plus, although when you follow on Twitch, it does give you a notification if you've got Twitch open that, you know, muck luck went live. But if you're not sitting on Twitch, you might see the YouTube video first. I also plug on Discord when I go live. I used to plug on my Facebook and my Twitter when I went live, but then I realized one day my Twitter feed was nothing but going live posts. It's the most boring Twitter to look at. And I was like, this has got to change. So I started only tweeting when I went live if it was of a giveaway night. Those are the only nights that I would tweet. And I just started tweeting other things. Funny things my kids said, you know, whatever. And Twitter started growing a lot. Now my Twitter is still relatively small compared to my other platforms, but it's doing really well. Uh, if I go to Twitter, I linked this earlier today. Got 23 likes, you know, that's honestly pretty good for one of my posts. You know, this is when I was trying to get that thumbnail and I got shot in the back. So my guy screamed, you know, waving his arm at the sky during that moment. Oh God, I just saw this. Another thing I did. Another thing I did. I don't know if any of y'all have heard of Gleam. Is there anyone here who's ever seen a Gleam giveaway? Oh my God, I worked this system too. All right, so here's what I did. Here's what I did. First, I got into you doing humble, humble bundles. Humble bundles. I think it's Humble Choice now. So yeah, formerly Humble Monthly. So I, I discovered Humble Choice and it's a, it's a really good deal. And I would essentially give uh, a basic. Every two weeks, I would gift one of these out. So I was spending spending $15 and what you could say was advert. This leads to being advertising, okay? I budgeted this as advertising. $15 to buy a basic thing. It used to be 10, they increased the price. Uh, so I was spending $10, okay? Here's what I would do. I would take that right here. Our next giveaway is open. Giving out a humble bundle on 5-22-20 to a lucky winner or supporter. Click the link below to enter your name for up to seven chances to win. There will be a second separate hum humble bundle given out at the stream, okay? So I would do this. I would use Gleam. Now, they click the, the Gleam link. The seven ways to enter was to fo follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page, which is basically a follow, uh, visit my YouTube. You can't ask for a YouTube sub, but you can ask them to visit. And some people would see it go, oh, this is cool. And they would sub. Not many, but some would. Follow me on Twitch retweet the tweet to blast it out. And I honestly don't remember the last two. Those were what I would have them do to enter into a giveaway. So all of a sudden, everything started spider webbing together. People on YouTube who didn't care about the Twitch and the Facebook and the Twitter were connecting to those. People on the Twitch who didn't care about the YouTube and the Facebook and the Twitter were connecting to those. All of them were, uh, no, you cannot ask for a YouTube subscribe through Gleam. Uh, Gleam specifically says that they, they made a change and that's not allowed anymore. Oh, that's right, there were two retweet. Thank you, Jinxie. So on every single one of these Gleam giveaways, every two weeks. And look, you can see, I didn't ask people to like it. 16 people would like it, but 135 retweets. So this thing just, just branched out. It just spiderwebbed through the through Twitter, right? Because people would retweet it, and then their greedy friends would retweet it, and then their greedy friends would retweet it. It was a commercial, all right? And then I would legitimately draw a winner on stream, and then I would give out a second one to someone who was at the stream. I did that like every, every two weeks, okay? And it was a lot of work, but it cost me like, you know, 10 bucks. Now, the second retweet, why play Guild Wars 2? Explaining the appeal and the charm. Have a friend do you think might like the game? Share this with them. And it went to that YouTube video. Look at this. I had retweeting this video as part of a promotional campaign for like 20 campaigns in a row. Now, 96 people liked it. They didn't have to. 832 retweets because I kept using it as an entry ticket for a giveaway. And anyone who saw the video, well, they saw my YouTube channel. If they liked it, they subbed. If they watched an ad, I got ad revenue. If they downloaded the game, I got a freaking referral. And I, I I know some of the like devs at ArenaNet, uh, I got notifications that they were following this tweet. They noticed that, I, of course they don't care. I was basically free advertising, but there was some different people from ArenaNet that were like head devs and stuff that were following this tweet. 
and I was getting notifications for it. Uh, that's right, Oz. Yeah, I, I write it off as uh, advertising. I write it off as advertising when I was doing that. I stopped doing it because I didn't have the time anymore. It took so long to set up the Gleam and the Humble Bundle and the thumbnails and all that stuff for it. Like, when I discovered Gleam, I was like, holy crap, I could do some stuff with this. And I actually paid, I think it was $100 for a year of a uh, higher tier Gleam thing to make all this work. So that is what I was doing for a long time. That got, you know, it's really difficult to grow the, what is my Twitter at right now? I've got 2,600 followers on Twitter. Yeah, it, it's a lot more difficult to grow the Twitter and the Facebook for me now than it is the Twitch and the YouTube. Those are both kind of growing naturally over time. Uh, but the Twitter and the Facebook grow much slower. And yet, companies look at that. You know how most of the companies that want to contact me for like the occasional sponsorship and stuff contact me? It's the this right here they 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 go here to the twitch and then they go to the twitter and then they look for like an, an email address and then they just blast me stuff the people that wanted me to review a waifu pillow people that send me game codes i i got one today it's for a game that's not with even close to any genre i play i probably won't do it but i i get free game codes like all the time and stuff like that because they're starting to notice so let's see I used Hubble Bundle giveaways, which is effectively like in total, you could say I was spending $5 a week on advertising to grow all of my platforms using a combination of Humble Bundle, Gleam, and Twitter, which were then advertising Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and way later on, Patreon. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think anyone would ever become a patron just because a Gleam link told them to look at the Patreon. This day, oh man. Okay, so you can see right here. Do you see how on this one day I went from 11,000 followers to 12,000? That was the day I celebrated being live every day for two years without missing a day. That was in May. And what we did was I made a video on YouTube saying, hey, this coming Sunday, huge party. This is what we're celebrating. We've got all this loot and I'm giving away, it was like six legendary weapons. I've also got 12 precursors. I've also got six copies of Path of Fire from Flute Girl. Every hour I'm giving away thousands of gold and we're having a big old freaking party and I've got a pointy hat. And I had like a funny little video that was advertising it. I advertised on Facebook, my Facebook, Guild Wars 2 Community Facebook, uh, YouTube, I had the video sitting there for like weeks. And of course on Twitch, I was constantly advertising it. When that day happened, we peaked at 1,137 average viewers. I think we almost hit 1,400 maximum because I had advertised it for so long. And over the course of that, dude, there was so many people that maybe never even had a Twitch account that made a Twitch account for the giveaway. They decided to make one for my event and then they proceeded to, you know, come in. And so I got a thousand followers that day. But yeah, so that was uh, basically successful advertising. I went nuts on all these different platforms. Yeah, ad advertising freaking successful. And that day went really good. And I think this day here was, yeah, that day was my birthday. How are we gonna blow that record up? Dude, I don't know, I don't know. It would have to be a big giveaway. That gi giveaway, there's a reason streamers do giveaways. You know, in part, it's because y'all give me so much stuff, I can't freaking find anything to do with it. So I just redistribute the wealth. I freaking Robin Hood over here. But also it's, you know, from a very early time, I was doing giveaways once a week for between 10 and 100 gold of worth of stuff, whatever I could afford, because it was advertising. For every 10 people that came into the stream just wanting to get some, steal some of my gold, I was hoping that one of them would like the stream and come back. That's it. I was hoping that, uh, you know, at least one of them would come come back to the stream. That's That's advertising. You're gonna get you know, for every 10 people, maybe for every 30, 50, 100 people that just hits the follow button because they had to to win a giveaway, most of them will not care to unfollow when they're done. And maybe they'll come back when they're in a rare mood, or maybe some of the people will pop in and be like, oh man, I actually like this guy who dresses up like a dancing potato. And he, and you know, they'll, they'll return. But yeah, is there anything else to be gleaned from here? Time streamed by game. <laughs> We've, you can see all those color, those colors there. We have tried uh, a lot of different games. I have tried a lot, but just none of them have done for me what Guild Wars 2 has done for me. So keep, keep coming back to this.
Not enough Guild Wars 2, yeah. Mm. So like here, if we look at this, this shows you views by game. This is really, really good if you're, you, if you're looking at variety. Uh, so for example, if you are, who's someone I know that does variety? Uh, Jebro. Jebro does a ton of different games. If he were to look at this, you see, for me, Guild Wars 2 is in green, Iron Harvest is in red, that was a sponsored stream, Raid Shadow Legends is in orange, that was a sponsored stream. Before I used giveaways to promote nights like that, any night I did something out of the ordinary, some people would stay, but we could very easily go from 200 viewers to 100. Like, you could see there's a dip, like, there is a dip, but a lot of people stay because I incentivize it. I'm like, hey, give this new title a chance, and I got some fat loot for you at the end, you know? Stuff like that. And then some people like it, some people just stay for the loot, and, you know, and, and that's understandable, that's fine. Uh, I don't know if this was asked or if it's rude, but how's the income? Is it sustainable? How many followers that you reached that made you say this is sustainable? No, I can, I can, I, I'm gonna be a little vague, but I can answer that. Um, but yeah, this is really useful if you play a lot of different games. You could see in a clear chart how many viewers you had per game per night. And you can see, like, oh man, when I swapped a ba 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 there was a huge dip or there was a huge spike. You know, you can change your, your methods based on this. Don't you get burned out where you don't feel like streaming? How often does it happen where you, or you were, if you were to estimate every month? I don't get burned out. But on the same token, I think that that is a personality thing. A personality thing. Okay, hold on. Let me... Uh, I, I'm opening up a notepad. Hold on. Income question, burnout question. Okay, let, let's, hit each, let's hit each of these. Let's hit each of By the way, I love that you guys are asking questions on this. Income. I won't say what I make because that's a, a little odd. Uh, like, I don't know if this is worldwide. In America, it is almost taboo to talk about your exact income. I, 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 I and plus, I'm, I'm getting by. I could tell y'all I'm getting by. Follower count really doesn't matter. It's your viewer count, but often viewer and follower count can, are related. But it's you, you also can't technically say it on Twitch. Well, I can't say my Twitch income on Twitch, but I think I could talk about my YouTube income on Twitch if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think Julia is correct. It's, you know, subs, bits, tips, if y'all watch an ad, that stuff's income. That stuff is extremely volatile. Like, there has been some months since I went full time where like, you know, I had month A where I made double month B. Now, month A was a birthday month, y'all went a little crazy that month, but still, it's extremely volatile, okay? If anybody wanted to do this full time, don't go into it full time unless you are, you could get by on the worst months, the lower ones, right? Um, so that that's Twitch. Now, YouTube, YouTube is much more consistent. You know, it's like, you know, it starts to go down and then I upload a new video and it goes up. Starts to go down, I upload a new video and it goes up. It's pretty much that. And then the, the bottom baseline is a little higher with every video. So like I can very tangible and I, and I love that, I love that. Because with YouTube, I'm not taking money from people that are watching me. It's, it's all ad revenue. You know, believe me, it's, it's amazing when someone comes in here and they're like, you know, oh, you know, gift in subs or, you know, use their prime and stuff like that. But at the same time, I would love to do this in a way where I take as little, as close to nothing as possible from my audience, you know? YouTube, I, I really like because of that. Uh, so, you know, I'm getting some, some income from YouTube. I'm getting some income from Twitch, but the Twitch income is extremely volatile. I just said that. Then there is re referrals. I can't say anything more on that, but I'll tell you there's referrals. Amazon Associate links. I only ex very, very recently became an Amazon Associate. I'm constantly plugging that at the end of each stream. For every person, uh, and here I'll, I'll plug in the chat, for every person that uses these links when they make a purchase off Amazon, I get zero to 4% of it, depending on the item. At other times they will use the link and I'll, I'll get, uh, you know, a bigger chunk. Uh, what items help you more? Dude, I actually know, I don't know any rhyme or reason. I don't know rhyme or reason. But the main thing is, is it's almost effortless. Like, if I get a thousand freaking grandmas to bookmark this Amazon, they can literally do nothing different in their life except use the bookmark when they go to Amazon. And there would be helping support me. 
So it is pennies per person, probably, it, unless they make some insane purchase. Like if they order a flatbed full of iPads, then, you know, that would be a big hit. But for most people, it's it's very, very small, but it's adding up and I'm seeing it add up. So the Amazon associate link is starting starting to actually like right now it, it pays for maybe one grocery bill a month, but I've only been doing it for a couple of months. So it's coming along. Patreon. Um, I was really weird about starting a patron. It, it was actually someone in chat who was like, if you start a Patreon, I will become your first patron that actually pushed me to do it. And I was super concerned about living up to expectations. And when I did it, I was trying, I was racking my brain trying to figure out what could I give patrons? What could I give patrons? And what I ended up doing was the early release system. Um, for example, I, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up my calendar link here. I'm gonna use the link that you guys get. So you can see, here's today. Yesterday, or I'm sorry, uh, on this day, patrons got a video called Muck vs. World vs. World. The public gets that video tomorrow. Then patrons get a video called How to Get Started in Rates. I made this today. And then the public gets that video on Sunday. So the patrons are always one video in the future. That was one idea I had to reward them. Plus they get to vote occasionally on videos. I'm trying to keep them involved in the creative process as much as they want to be. I'm probably going to have them vote on a spooky game that I don't want to play for October. So this was a thing. Um, I didn't have anything tangible I could give, but this has been going pretty well. So th this is, um, you know, th this is what I've been doing so far. So Patreon, I think, and I'm only going to tell you this because it's public information. Just you could see it on the Patreon. I think I'm getting 300 a month from Patreon. Patreon... I had a stretch goal on there. If we got past 250, I would do a, a, a like a 12 hour stream once per month in celebration of the patrons. That's the Sunday stream I do once per month. Uh, are you saying patrons are time travelers? Sure. I welcome to patron emails very often. I'm always delivering some morning entertainment. Thank you, Nate. You can hide your pattern income. I could, I could, but it's actually statistically, Patreons do better if they keep that public. I think people appreciate you being open about that. So, but yeah, statistically, people generally do better if they've got their Patreon um, uh, income and number of patrons as a public thing. So I've just been following that advice. So we covered YouTube, Twitch, which again is very all over the place. Patreon, which is, Patreon's probably the most reliable, but it takes a long time to grow. You know, you got to convince people that you're worth becoming a patron for. That's, that's coming out of the fans' pockets. But Patreon's the most reliable because it automatically, unless they cancel it, it automatically, like if they, if they become a patron for $3 a month, every month on the same day, it takes the $3 unless they cancel it. On the flip side, on Twitch, if you subscribe with $5, you might subscribe with $5, and then the next month you forget about it until the 15th. And then the next month you forget about it till the 28th, you know? Still super grateful for anything that you guys do, but if if you, it doesn't auto renew, so it's just more reliable. You know, the patrons uh, the most reliable for those reasons. Are you a patron for anybody? I, I am not, and I had actually never even been on the Patreon website before I was pushed into making a Patreon. I had never been on Patreon or Twitter before like six months ago. It was actually the community pushing me to do those things that I started doing those things. It was like, I had never even been on those websites. I had never tweeted or anything like that. A standard Twitch sub does auto renew. I apologize. I was thinking of prime subs. Uh, prime subs do not auto renew. Uh, and honestly, it makes complete sense that they don't, but those are the ones where if people, if people forget, then, you know, it's, it's very all over the place. What about, how does the family feel about your streaming life? They are extremely, extremely supportive. Sponsors. And when I say Twitch, I mean bits, subs, tips, any of that. All of that, very volatile. Sponsors. It was very, very... Okay, this was something that I had issues with early, uh, early on. You know, when I got to, uh, you know, X followers, Y viewers, Z subs, I was like, I need sponsors. You know, I, I freaking... It was almost a joke, but I, I, I reached out to Coca-Cola. I was like, yeah, you, you want me. And they're like, ah, don't call us, we won't call you. You know, stuff like that. I, I, I thought it was time to have sponsors. No, 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 no. Guys, like, when you go out and you, like, tr when you're not already big, the only ones you're going to get are bad deals. 
Like, we'll put our logo on your stream. You're like, oh my god, they'll put the logo on your stream. You're just advertising for them. You, you, if, you just, if you just slap their logo on your stream, you're just advertising for them. You're not, that's not doing anything for you. In fact, if other companies look at you later and see how easy you were to just, you know, be taken advantage of, that might put you worse off down the road. Like, I have learned so much more about this later on. I, I'm really lucky I didn't get just chewed up and spat out early on because I totally would have fallen for it. If you just focus on your content and you get bigger as a, as whatever you're doing, you know, uh, uh, freaking audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. If you get big just because people like your content, then they start running to you. The sponsors start coming to you. The, uh, the, 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 the thing, the gig I've got this Saturday where I've got, I'm going to have between 50 and $200 worth of stuff to give to chat. They came to me. The Raid Shadow Legends thing, where I gave $400 worth of stuff to chat. They came to me. The freaking email I got, I, I've gotten like three emails this month where people just gave me free game keys without even asking if I wanted them first. They're like, here's a free game key. Can you can you please do a review? And I didn't even have to promise anything. They just gave me the game key. They're just hoping I do it. The freaking, the ones that wanted me to review a waifu pillow. I don't know what about my channel made them think, this guy needs a naked anime person pillow. That, that face, that face says naked anime person pillow. He'll do it. He'll do it. I don't know what about me that they thought that I was going to be that guy. But by God, they, they, they thought I was that guy. <laughs> it's, yeah. Sorry, I've heard my last Twitch try, so I can't afford a private anymore. It's university of Yo, Bob, you're totally fine. I never apologize because you can't give something you elected to give in the past. Y'all totally fine. Y'all totally fine. Like, my, my end goal would be to get to the point where I can live comfortably off like ad revenue and I don't have to worry about taking anything from anyone that is enjoying my content. That would be the dream for me. But you know, we're that's down the road. Uh, don't waifu pillows increase your DPS and rates? I have no idea. Look, I can take that off your hand. No, they haven't shipped it to me. They were ready. They were like, oh, pick one, pick one. And they were like, you, you want naked anime boy, naked anime girl? Which one do you want? Look, you flip it over, there's a butt on the back. I'm like, oh my God, there's zucchinis everywhere. No, please stop. Uh, it isn't about you. They figure these should advertise as part of your audience, is it? Maybe, maybe they look at you guys. They just read the chat. They're like, these people would buy waifu pillows. Burnout. Someone asked how I avoid burnout. Okay, how many days... How many days since May 26th? All right, so we're at 851 days in a row. This was the day, this was the day that I streamed and I haven't skipped a day since. May 26, 2018. Hey, what's up, Chip? Chip says hi. I don't know if y'all heard that. I think this is a personality trait and I am not a psychologist, but here, here's my, here's my thing on that. Okay, so we all know about introverts and extroverts. And if you don't, well, too bad. I'm not gonna go into that. When I am out in public with people I don't know, I'm very much an introvert. I do not talk like this if I'm surrounded by people I don't know. I can't, I can't. I just, I clam up. You know, they say like an, an introvert will go out to a party with their friends. And even if they're super having fun, when they get home, they are exhausted and they just need to be alone. They put on sweatpants, they eat straight out of the ice cream tub and they turn on the freaking law and order or something. I don't know. The extroverts, they go out to the party and they get amped up. They gain energy. They, they energize and then they go home and maybe they can't sleep, right? So you got these two personality traits. It is my personal belief that streamers can be the same way. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. You've got some streamers that they might love streaming, but it takes a lot out of them. They get on stream, they, they, put on, they, they do the show and they just get drained. You see people on Twitter all the time that will be like, hey guys, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cancel tonight's stream. I'm super drained. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Hugs and kisses, mwah, mwah, mwah. You know, it's whatever. You know, there's all the time people canceling their streams on my Twitter feed. And that's fine, that's fine. Like I would say a normal human being should take breaks. It's completely fine. I'm not judging them for that. But I think like they, they love the activity, but they don't have the, the energy for it, right? Now, on the flip side, maybe they just freaking broke their leg. Maybe their mom's in the hospital, whatever. Maybe they've got other concerns, but I'm talking about the days where nothing is wrong, they just don't have the energy, okay? That's what I'm talking about. On the flip side, you've got freaks like me, all right? Don't clip that, it's too late. I can have a terrible day, I can be tired, and I can start up the stream, 
And y'all literally, like, I'm almost an extrovert when it comes to streaming. Y'all literally energize me while I'm here. Y'all can make a bad day better. You guys keep me out of therapy. You guys are like the, the, the best priced therapy I could get. Talking to you guys is great for me. I will go through the stream and be great. And then at the end of the stream, my head is just buzzing with ideas of what to do to make the stream better. Maybe it's like a new emote idea. Maybe it's a new banner. Maybe it's like, oh man, I should tweet this tomorrow. Oh, oh, I should jot this idea for a new video in my idea list. And I, I won't be able to sleep for an hour or two because my head's just buzzing. And then the next day I feel like a zombie because I didn't get enough sleep. Yeah, so burnout, I haven't felt that in 851 days. The only days I think I pushed myself were the days that I was sick and I still streamed for like one hour to keep the streak alive. There was a day that my voice was completely gone and we just embraced it. I The name of the, the stream that day was like Muckluck ASMR, still recovering. And I was like, hey guys, Muckluck Dr. Liz Bethel, let me rental this one the fourth here. Welcome back to another episode. I had to whisper. I had to whisper for an hour and uh, it was it was whatever. And then I went I went to bed. I went to bed. I, I've definitely had days where I was freaking tired, but not days where I was burned out. Like I was just physically tired. Like I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the grindstone really. Like you could see, like look, 11th, 13th, 15th, 17th, 19th, 21st. I don't have an editor. <laughs> like honestly, like I, it's like I, I do five hours of streaming minimum each night, and then during the day I'm just crunching out YouTube vids and trying to be a dad at the same time. Maybe be a husband for 15 minutes, eat food, sleep for a half hour, and come back. Do not, you know, y'all know Noxie the Noxian. Uh, she, I, I think she, I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm going to assume she just because the icon is a she. Uh, she, uh, was, is, re, is going to be going full-time editor soon. And I was very seriously looking to see if I could afford that. I, unfortunately I can't because I know Noxie does amazing work. It's just, that's right now being able to employ somebody. That's like a pipe dream. I'm just, I got to watch out for, you know, me, wife, child right now. Somebody asked how I was doing compared to tech support. Okay, so obviously I took a hit and I can tell you why it's obvious. I was streaming and doing tech support and then I stopped doing one of those things. So obviously I took a huge income hit. Now, I started hitting the grindstone really hard on streaming. I started pushing out twice as many YouTube videos as I was before that started helping a lot. And uh, also, I lost uh, insurance through the company I was with. So my insurance prices went way up because Murica, Murica chat. So that was dumb. I know your family supports you. Was it hard to you start to go full time stream YouTube? So when I when it became a full time hobby, it's almost amazing how much Lady Luck supported me. Because I told you guys about the therapy thing, right? Like, it, it, be, it was a very therapeutic thing doing this. I could come home and have a bad day. And instead of, like, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I, I imagine in the cart in cartoons or on a sitcom, the wife would, like, you know, you know sit, sit, you know, like, oh, honey, take a seat. Here's the remote. Here's a beer. You know, I, I, I've got a roast in the oven. I, I don't know. You know, she'd pamper him or something. My wife would be like... Honey, you need a stream. And she would shove me into the study, which was both flattering and mildly like, oh, this is all I get. You know, <laughs> and she would just shove me into the study and she's like, come out when you're normal again and close the door and maybe lock it from the outside. Like that's how she was. She knew that it would f fix me. And so she was totally fine with it. She's like, you know, go go fit, work out your problems with strangers on the internet and then come back. I'm not dealing with you right now. So yeah, she was fine with that. Now, when we had to, when I went from full-time hobby and full-time job to just a full-time stream, you know, content creation. I shouldn't say stream because I'm making YouTube. I should say content creation. When I went to full-time content creation, we had to have a very serious talk because, you know, it was, it was a pipe dream for a long time. Like, oh man, right now it's a full-time hobby. I'm making a little bit of money on the side, pays a grocery bill each month, but... It, you know, if I could ever do this full time, that would be the dream, right? It would be the dream. But, you know, I never really had huge hopes for it. When, when we were going full time, I very, very serious. We, we, we sat down and we friggin budgeted the crap out of our household. We budgeted the crap out of our household. We had to make sure that nothing was going to be wrong if I started doing this full time. And, you know, we looked at how much I made on the worst of months before we decided, yes, Michael can try this for X months before we give up on this idea. But so far, it's been good. It's been good. Imagine your hobby being your job feels good. I know, I know. I've, you know, I never in my life, you know, liked going to work before being able to do this. But 
had to chase it for a long time. So, so yeah, the, I would say the biggest conversation, Mr. Falange, came when I was talking with the wife before, uh, when we were deciding, should I become full-time content creation or do I need to try to find a new job while it also happens to be during a pandemic? Um, so I'm, I'm kind of lucky because I didn't, I want to remind you guys, many of you know this, I didn't quit my job. Uh, the department I was in got laid off. Now, I got unemployment for a time, which helped uh, because of, you know, I, I was the good boy. I didn't do anything wrong. They just had to lay us off because they decided they don't they didn't want that department anymore. It had nothing to do with the pandemic. They just decided they didn't want that department anymore and just <laughs> nuked it. So, you know, we, 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 we got let go and they were good to us. They were good to us. Uh, you know, it was, it was a, as good a deal as you can get for someone losing a job. But I had to choose find a new job during pandemic or try to make my hobby be a full time thing. And fortunately, I had the hobby thing to fall back on because otherwise we would have been in a lot more trouble. And honestly, because my kid is having to go to school from home now, if I had still been at that job at this time, I honestly don't know what we would have done. I do not know how we would have handled this. If I had to go work at the tech support place and my wife is st my wife works full time also, and then someone had to be home with my kid and I live an hour from any family, I have no idea how we would have handled that. I don't know if one of us would have had to quit our jobs at that point. But yeah, so I, I'm not sure what would have happened there. Casual, I don't know what the top two things are that helped my channel grow. I know the biggest spike I, w I went over it earlier was when my YouTube channel blew up and then it carried the Twitch. But I gotta say, now that I'm thinking about it, this intro, Muggly Nugget was about to be original. That's why the fourth is the best. The third book is more Copoco to the buzz of your lounge. Hope you enjoy your stay tuned. Crippers on the way. Give always every week. Please take a seat. But all I need the edge. Mm. I, I used to do that for every follower. And then I outgrew the ability to do that. I outgrew the ability to do that. Even now, sometimes I have to like wait a while and do the welcomes in batches. And I'm just doing it for subs now. But there's so many people that like I do that and they laugh like I, I, they laugh and they're like, oh, dude, that, that was hilarious. What are you doing? And then they might stick around a few more minutes. They might uh, they might not have otherwise. So even if it's something like goofy, if you're a streamer, definitely recommend some kind of intro. Writing names on a board in yoga pants. Oh, my God. <laughs> the biggest thing was making c c YouTube content that was evergreen, that people were hitting, and then linking it to Twitch. That was the single biggest thing. If you ask for the second biggest thing, <sighs> it's frowned upon now, but I'm going to tell you what I did then, and it was allowed then. Okay? I'm going to tell you what I did then. All right. Y'all know about Twitch communities. I'm in delusional elitist right now. A lot of us just auto-host each other when we're offline. It's a whole bunch of Guild Wars 2 streamers, right? So, there are a lot of communities, and essentially it'll be a Discord, and when you go live, you post in the Going Live channel. However, no one in the community actually talks to each other. Like, if you're on a Discord, and the only thing you do on that Discord is you go to the Going Live channel and you post there when you go live, you're probably gonna get between zero and one viewers per month from that Discord, because you're not interacting with anybody, right? You know, and of course, you know, if there's there's a, there's a hundred or thousands of people there, all that are uh, suppliers, and there's no consumers there. So I, for a while, I was posting on like eight different Discords every time I went live. It doesn't do anything. Now, there was one that did, but the way that they did it is no longer allowed by Twitch. Royale Streamers. I don't know if any of y'all know what that is, but let me go over it really quickly. Royale Streamers is now severely frowned upon, and I have not been a member of them since like mid last year. But at the time, what it was is when you watched another streamer in Royale, they had a bot that would detect you in the chat and it would give you points. And when you got points, your rank went up on a leaderboard. And then you became worth more points. So the more you watched, the more it incentivized other people to watch you. Now they might talk, and if you if they were chatting in your chat, they got 10 times the points per minute. So what that resulted in was a community of a thousand streamers, and anytime one of them was offline, nine, you know, anytime one of them was online, there'd be 99 others 
that would be watching the the guy that was online and chatting and saying the dumbest stuff to get their points you know like you would tell okay it, it was like seeing a bunch of giddy girls on their first date like you would say the dumbest joke and they would all be like <laughs> they were trying to get their points but being in that community overnight my viewership you know went from like 30 to 100 but it wasn't real but 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 i'm gonna tell you what it did do did any of those people sub no did any of them follow no did any of them directly help me in any way there is one way on twitch when you look at the guild wars 2 section it's an order of viewers right it is the people with the most viewers at the top going down so by being in that community, I went wonk straight to the top. And then that led to other people possibly clicking on me first. You know, like if you're sitting down, you're in the mood to try to watch somebody new, maybe they click on that. Now that whole practice of, uh, you know, essentially y'all know lurking, it, essentially like anytime I would like go to sleep, I would leave like 10 streams open lurking because of that thing. So there was a period of time I was growing and there was a, it was very much, I was basically given a fast forward because I was in that community. Now, again, that whole practice is frowned upon and that whole team has been disbanded. And I have been like, oh shoot, well, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not touching that again. And I haven't touched any teams like that ever since, nor do I need to anymore. But that was something I did early on that gave me a nice head start. But I got to tell you, there is so many people that were in Royale Streamers when I was in there that, like, I had 800 followers, they had 3,000, and I was like, oh my god, that's the big times. And I've gone back and looked at them since. I'm now at 20,000 followers. They're still where they were. Like, when, when Royale Streamers was disbanded, I kept doing my thing, and they went down to, like, seven viewers a night because they never changed what they were doing like they they didn't they didn't change with the with the times if i if i was never in royale i would probably just be on the same track but a few months behind where i'm at right now you know youtube i get so many followers per day from youtube while i'm not live like so many so check this out this is a uh, people that have followed is Roland big bad so 10 10 to 15 maybe 20 followers because of YouTube when I was offline Twitch has no discoverability when you're offline if you're not live no one can find you if you have something on YouTube people can find it 24 hours a day and then if they like it maybe they'll click the link to your Twitch if your stuff is all on Twitch people can only find it during the time it's live. What was it? Druid Guide was nice to watch. I'll make it away for music. Yeah, like Asmongold. Y'all know, like him or, you know, like him, love him, hate him, whatever. Asmongold, biggest World of Warcraft streamer. He says that where he got his start is he went to YouTube and he found guides that he thought were, I'm going to PG this, crappy, and he just remade them. He's like, I could do better than that. And he just remade them. And that was how he built up his fame. He's, he literally just remade guides that were already there better. Now, that's not really how I've been doing it. I've just simply been trying to cover every topic I could think of, but I'm sure in that process, I've remade guides that already existed. Uh, who's the other streamer or Twitcher you listen to help you? Someone mentioned it earlier. Uh, maybe Devin. I listen to Devin Nash and Harris Heller a lot about advice related to stream. Devin Nash is very business oriented. He is a streamer, but he constantly says it's his side gig. He doesn't need to do it. And he talks about business and he's interviewed like one of Amazon's top people came on his show. Like he interviews like some huge people on his show and they talk about like business and like how easy it is to take advantage of streamers that don't know their own worth. Like he'll talk about being in an interview with someone and they're like, oh, you know, uh, you know, how much were you thinking of getting for the sponsorship? And the streamer will be like, oh, I was thinking maybe, you know, five hundred dollars. And the, and he's like, you know, Devin be like, uh huh, uh huh. And in his head, he's like, ha. He's worth four times that. And he's like, I'll have to talk to some people, but you know, I like you. I think that you've got a lot going for you. And I think 
you would be worth the investment. Like he'll and he'll flat out say to the Twitch audience, he'll be like, "Oh my god, dude, it is my job to screw you guys over. You need to look into what you're worth. It is freaking like it is my job to rip you off for as much as I can, and because then our company gets more of that profit." Yeah, he's it's very very educational listening to Devin. At this point, I think I've almost outgrown the advice Harris Heller gives, but it's really, really good advice for, for smaller streamers. Um, he does a lot of product reviews. You know those new NVIDIA graphics cards? He's already got one of those and he's been doing test trials. He's made a new computer uh, out of it and he's had it basically compete against his current uh, dual PC setup to see how it fares and stuff like that. Like he has a lot of hardware stuff going on on his channel. Um, Harris Heller, will t uh, in his opinion, the best thing he did when he had, like, when he got enough money to do so, was he hired a full-time editor. So his money, he just got above being okay and crashed himself back down to barely okay to have a full-time editor to churn out way more YouTube videos. And then he started going up again, and he just keeps reinvesting in the stream. I've had, okay, okay. I want to phrase this very carefully because I consider some of these people friends. But I've had a lot of people tell me, like, Muck, thank you for making guide on XYZ. There were already guides out by ABC, but I can't understand their accent. Now, I love those people, but apparently that gets me views sometimes. Just the fact that I can speak clearly in my native tongue. That apparently gives me an advantage. It's something I never thought about. It's something I never thought about until people told me that. Harris is a broken record with his advice. Yeah, if you've watched like 30 of his videos, you've probably seen all 700, but it's still really good advice if you're starting out. That's another thing. Oh, that's another really good point to this whole conversation. Okay, in my, in my mind, there are two types of streamers. There's two, that's it. There are streamers where they don't have to talk. Just what they're doing they're so freaking good at it, or it's so cool to watch, they don't have to say a word. Let me give you some examples. Someone in creative doing art. Maybe they just got some chill music going. They're drawing, you're like, man, that's some good art. You're just watching. I've seen a guy in creative that was in a wood shop. He literally, no, it was a glass blower shop. He had a camera in the corner. He would walk over and talk to Twitch periodically, but he was literally like doing glass blowing. It was like flamethrowers everywhere. And he was doing that. He didn't have to say much of anything. It was just music and him doing his craft. There's the the guys that are, think like the best of the best of the best of the best first person shooter and League of Legends players. The ones with reflexes honed in Area 51 like Shroud, the, you know, the, the government experiment who escaped. Like those guys, they can afford to not, to, to, to not talk or to have like a no personality outside of raw skill, right? So in my mind, all of that is, is one type of streamer. The people that are so good or so interesting at what they're doing, you don't have to talk. No, they could if they chose to, but they don't have to. Then <laughs> there's people like me. The people like me, that it's personality. Uh, yeah, I try to be good at the game, but I, I know I'm not, you know, for, I'm never going to be Shroud or anything like that, uh, even in the games I love. So let's spice it up, you know? Let's tell some jokes. Let's have some back and forth. Let's talk about what's going on. Let's share, you know, get people invested, stuff like that. Like, it, it, there, there's the the ones that, they're, you know, their they're skill carries the stream and then there's the others that their skills not enough their skill is not enough so you might watch because they try to make it funny or entertaining or giveaways all of the above whatever what if you're not skilled or funny great news those are both skills that can be learned i gotta tell you if you like i really like comedy i watch a lot of comedy a lot of the times when y'all put me in You're a weird situation, like a shut up, Lorenity. A lot of times when y'all put me in a weird situation and I just crack a joke like that, it's a joke I heard at some point in the last 10 years. And I'm just like, oh, let me f go into this file folder. Uh, let's see, Bill Ingvall, 1999. Perfect. Your mother, you know, whatever. Like, oh, Muck, you never tell a dad joke. Oh, I've only made one dad joke and he's upstairs asleep in his bed. 
Heard that from a comedian. I've gotten to use it like four times on stream. You watch enough, you watch enough comedians, you just start remembering their stuff and you can just spit that out. Like that is a learned skill. If you want to be funny on stream, watch a lot of funny stuff to the point where you can regurgitate some of it if the opportunity presents itself. The downside? I sometimes almost say some r stuff that I should really not say when some really dark things happen. Like someone can tell me like, oh my God, grandma's dead. And the first thing that pops into my mind is usually something I should absolutely not say. And I have to bite my lip. Like, just, just whatever. Like, it's always, I'm so sorry. Like, it, I just sound like a robot because that's not the first response. That's not the first, no, it's, it's always something that would be, yeah. Yeah, it's all, yeah, that, that's that's the downside. That's It's the double-edged sword. It, it, <laughs> it takes away at that. But skill, you can refine skill in a game. But at the same time, you're probably not going to be better than the guy who's been living and breathing that game who lives in California with zero ping. People that want to be better singers, they take singing lessons. Like, Britney Spears wasn't able to auto-tune herself from six years old. She had to learn to auto-tune herself, chat. That doesn't come naturally. You don't you you have to work for the auto-tune. <laughs> All right, see, again, I'm taking a chance to slip a joke in that I've heard before in the past. Did any of y'all see... That guy who was on the, the Got Talent show, and they're like, uh, yeah, sorry, you lose. And he's like, no, I don't lose. Um, I've worked too hard for this. And Britney Spears was in the, the panel of judges. And she said, well, not everyone gets to achieve their dreams. And the contestant said, well, that's why you use auto-tune and I don't. And then <laughs> the Simon Simon was like in the middle of drinking something and he's like <laughs> he freaking lost it. So again, this is me recycling a joke that I heard that made Simon spit out his soda. But yeah, yeah, you, you just keep watching stuff that's funny and you start to be able to just spit it back if that's what you want. If that's what you want. I watched an interview from Devin Nash um, and, and he was interviewing the guy, uh, this guy in a, that plays... He plays the Tarkov game. You guys could correct me and I'll see it after the Twitch delay. He got, he says, he has blown up recently because Tarkov blew up. And he got himself in a position that if Tarkov blew up, he would get carried along with it. So his whole, his whole thing, his whole strategy was know everything about the game. Now, as crazy as it sounds, I don't even meet that requirement for Guild Wars 2. You ask me what a Revenant does, and I, what a Revenant does, and I say they flex their schizophrenia ghost powers to do overpowered crap, that's what they do. Dude, I don't know, like, I could find out easily. But I can't just, oh, you know, Mace 3 does blah, you know, Mace 2 does blah, Axe 5 does blah, I don't know, I have to look it up, I, I can't remember. I know the offhand axe has a pull, I don't know which button is the pull, for example. But he just, his focus was to just be able to answer any question on that game. Not be the best at the game, be able to answer anything. So when Tarkov got really big, people would come in his channel and he had like, similar to mine, questions, welcome. And anytime someone come in and ask anything, he would just answer it. Someone would ask something else. Oh, no, you want to be using grenades this patch. They do more damage. Oh, don't use the Caltrops right now. They're bugged. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He'd answer everything and he just skyrocketed with the Tarkov fame. He just rode that wave. So for example, let's say the Steam launch of Guild Wars 2 in November goes really freaking well. Terra, Black Desert Online, and the Star Wars MMO, I forget the exact name of it. They all, I think, doubled in population when they went to Steam. Does Steam take like 30% of your freaking money if you're a game if you're a game developer? Yep. Is 30% worth doubling your player base? Yep. So, if a flood of players hit Guild Wars 2 through Steam, what do you think might happen to me? I am hoping those new players need some freaking guides. I have got myself in a great position if those new people need guides. I currently have 45 of them, and I think 41 of them are up to date because they were made evergreen. Wooden potatoes, cello frag, uh, teapot, they've all got various guides, some out of date, some up to date. And honestly, a newbie won't know what is out of date and they're gonna start looking stuff up. So the, it is completely possible that on Steam launch day, there is going to be a tidal wave of people that hit my YouTube, a tidal wave of people that hit my Twitch, 
tidal wave of new streamers in the Guild Wars 2 section that are trying it out. There's, it's also possible the servers are going to crash and this is going to be absolute hellfire. <laughs> let, let, let's just address the elephant in the room. It's also completely possible that Tyria itself explodes and the server blade just leaps right out of the closet. Like, it's that's also a possibility. But let's just, let's just hope that that doesn't happen. We'll see how that goes. After you grow, you can play any of them and get good viewers. Yes. Yeah, like once you, like right now. Okay, like you guys know me. We've got a pretty good relationship. I could probably stream almost anything. And if I'm lucky, I would still have 100 viewers. Like, no matter what I do, it's not going to please everyone. But there's a strong chance that at least a third of you would stick around for any wild and wacky thing. But it, it just depends on what's going on. Like, the days that I tried Elder Scrolls Online in uh, Final Fantasy XIV, those were other MMOs. Those have an overlapping interest with Guild Wars 2. The people that uh, liked Guild Wars 2 stayed, and my viewership stayed about the same. But when I tried Terraria, when I tried Minecraft, I think I went from like 300 viewers down to 200 or 200 down to 100. Still a lot of people stuck around. Not nearly the bulk of the community did. They just weren't all interested in that. It just depends on the thing. That's another thing, chat. I make an excessive amount of Twitch commands that points people to my YouTube channel. Someone's like, how do I arc? Command. How do I PvP? Command. How do I world be world? Command. How do I home instance? How do I build a guild? Command. You know, just whatever. What's the current giveaway? Command. What's the current time in Wichita? I have no idea. Go Google that one. You're an idiot. What's your Discord? Command. What's your Patreon? Command. What's your Amazon? Command. Dude, I tried. I tried to simplify everything as much as freaking possible. Just as much as freaking possible. Do you have a full list of your Twitch commands? Yes. Type slash exclamation commands. I have a command for the commands. And actually. Casual geeky girl because keeps that one up to date. You thought you had me. You thought you had me with that. No, sir. I've got a command for my commands. What's the program that you use with filters? I've got a guide for that. Click on that link right there. What do you wish you had known before you started streaming? A boatload of stuff. There is a channel on my Discord that's called Streamer Tips and Discussion. And I have just been dumping out all the stream tips and tricks I wish I had known on day one from my brain into that channel. If you're seeing this now or on YouTube later, and you want to know like anything that I haven't gone over related to what I wish I knew, join the Discord and read the Streamer Tips channel. There is so much there that I guarantee you, if I had known that stuff a year before, I would be so much bigger right now. Now, I do not regret where I'm at right now, but my first year on Twitch, I think I got like two, one or 2,000 followers. My second year, I went from 2,000 to 20. Because I didn't know what the crap I was doing the first year. What worked for you in steaming? What steaming? Or do you mean streaming? Wait, what? Oh, my title. My stream title is what worked for me in steaming. Nobody freaking told me. <laughs> uh, yes, we're talking about dry cleaning. 